What's going on everybody? My name is Repvile. Today we're going to be talking about my uh, 2019 Thor Outlaw. So I had a delivery date of this of April 2019 and I've had it for about six months now so I thought it might be helpful for anybody that's looking to buy one of these units to uh, get a buyer's perspective. So we're going to check out the Outlaw. We're going to go over some of the features and talk about some of the things I like about it. And some of the things I don't like about it, and there's a few things on this list that are, in my opinion, are uh, just unacceptable. Alright, so first off, this is sitting on a Ford E450 uh, chassis, powered by a Ford V10 Triton engine. It's right around 31 feet long. The Ford specs this engine at about 305 horsepower, 420 foot-pounds of torque. And it, for, the, for the weight of the vehicle, it's right around 14,000 pounds. Honestly, this uh, this motor does a really good job pulling it around. I have no problems with the chassis itself or with the motor. Um, I do run uh, I do run a vehicle that I pull behind it, and for running around here in Florida, it does really good. I have no problems keeping up with traffic, even over some of the tall bridges and stuff. I don't have any issues at all. It pulls really good with the tow vehicle. So you can see here you have some seamless windows. So these fit up nice and snug against the uh, against the body, so there there should not be any problems with any leakage or anything. And of course, the slide out has a uh, canopy over that to help keep the water out of it, or supposedly to help keep the water out of. It. All right, so here on the driver's side in the first compartment, we have the 10-pound propane tank. We do have a 4,000 watt own and generator, but to be honest, I don't really use this a whole lot, but. To its credit, it does start up, you know, when I'm just giving a maintenance check on it, it starts right up. Alright, next to the generator, here is your uh, sewer connections. Now, something to be cognizant of, that sewer connection does seem to hang a little bit lower than some of the other units I've seen, especially some of the pole behinds. Um, just, you would have to be a little bit careful not to knock that on anything. Or you could probably be in a whole mess of trouble if you did. Alright, next to that, this little compartment here, you get access to the black tank. In case you need to do any repairs or for some reason you needed access to it, there you go. Right here's your Santa flush connection so you can backwash the black tank. Right here, this is an instant hot water heater. So that's pretty nice. It does take a little bit getting used to. It is, uh,. The temperature fluctuates a little bit when you're actually using it when you're in the shower. Here we have an outside shower which has come in really handy for us. And there's your power outlet so you can connect the shore power, uh, cable connection, there's your city water connection, gas tank, all pretty standard. Here's a sewer hose storage, but honestly I, I don't know what hose fits in there. Mine certainly doesn't fit for some reason so I don't know, you could stick something else in there if you want, fishing pole or something. Alright, next to that, we have some storage and there's some important components snug inside here. Alright, so here we have a 1000 watt power converter. That's the controller for your slide out, and I believe it controls the bed probably too. Now one thing to note about this storage back here, something I'm having problems with, this thing leaks. Okay, I've had the seal replaced a couple times. Every time we have a heavy rain, this is full of water. Now, having the electrical components in here, especially the slide outs, that's not a good thing to have water built up in there. I think moisture could really damage stuff. Pretty nice awning, no problems with that. I think it's 16 by 10 or 16 by 11 feet, something like that. So it gives you pretty good coverage here. You have another storage pocket right there. It has what they call an HD graphics kit. It's probably a love it or hate it type of thing. I like it, it doesn't bother me. It seems to come in two colors, blue or red. Right here's where you would fill your water tank up if you wanted to use onboard water instead of uh, shore water. And right here we have a 32 inch TV and sound bar. And honestly the TV's not bad. It's, it, I have no problems with it at all. The sound bar sounds decent, decent enough, you know. Uh, we play a lot of video games and stuff at night, me and my kids, so. It's pretty nice having this on board. Alright, just below the TV, this is the access for the hydraulic pump. This is going to control your leveling jacks. Here we have another storage container. And I uh, had problems with this side leaking as well. 
It's been repaired a couple times. And right here, this is pretty nice. You can connect your uh, your portable grill to this so you don't have to keep using those little bottles. And here's the big feature. This is what sold me on this unit. Uh, I probably would have got something else if I didn't need this, but I have a couple motorcycles. I wanted something to carry those around. So this, this gate comes down, uh, turns into a ramp. You can load your bikes in there. It's pretty nice. All right, let's take a look inside here. I do have a problem with this door. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, under the steps, that's where your batteries are. You do have a linoleum floor. It looks nice, but that linoleum is pretty thin. You need to be pretty careful with that because it is easy to puncture. All right, so you've got GFI outlets. There's your lights, one for the external light, one for inside. You are on a control, step light, battery disconnect switch, power inverter, and you do have a solar controller right there. So in the cab, it is pretty basic. Nothing high end here. Uh, that carbon fiber is a nice touch compared to some of the other ones I've seen. You have an okay multimedia system. I mean, it does the job. It does have rear cameras and side cameras and some other things. Here's a view from in the cab. Um, one thing to note, those seats seem to be a little delicate, so you might want to be pretty careful with them. I think they'd be they might be a little bit easy to, to damage. Alright, so you do have a lot of storage space over the cab. Here we have a, we have a pet that we bring with us. And behind those pillows there is a 40 inch TV, I'll show you in a minute. You have some uh, AC ducts, a pretty decent exhaust fan right there. And some lighting that's over the cab still. Here's a 40 inch TV. Now this does swing out, but if you swing it too far, the, it touches the volume controls and makes it like go, you know, the volume go up. But the volume isn't very loud on this TV compared to the other one, so that's kind of a that's kind of a downfall. It does come with a Blu-ray player, some other connections up there. Now that HDMI connector that's hanging down, that will go to the TV that's by the refrigerator. All right, so just below that, you have some power outlets. You have your lighting, you have some USB ports. And you have some six inch speakers here that honestly don't sound very good at all. I want to replace them at some point. That is a 60 inch sleeper sofa. Um, there's not much storage underneath because there are some electrical components and things under there. And we have the other side, we have more storage on the other side. There's one thing I th can say about this unit, there's a lot of cabinets in it. And pretty much the same on this side, you got the speakers, the lights, more USB ports. Pillows that match the drapery. Now this does, uh, this is a 70 inch sleeper sofa. So it folds out, it's pretty close to the queen size, it's pretty wide once you get it down. And there is a little bit of storage underneath. It's also where you keep the table at. And un underneath this rug here, uh, you can insert the little poles and you can put, you know, the little breakfast tables up here if you want them. Alright, on the slide out here you have a little refrigerator uh, freezer combo. It does a pretty good job. I don't have any complaints about it. That's a propane detector. In case you have a leak inside, it'll go off. I think it's carbon monoxide also. Alright, here's the kitchen area. A lot of cabinetry over here. Microwave, convection oven combo. A little three burner stove. Acrylic backdrop. More cabinetry under the sink. We'll get into why I have plastic bags hanging here in a minute. Close up of the, of the microwave convection oven. It works pretty decent. So the three burner stove, those burners are pretty close together. You honestly probably are not going to use all three at the same time. Alright, so the reason I have this bag here is because that drawer 
is not shutting and I've had a lot of problems with drawers and cabinetry not closing correctly on here I've had some repaired already here's under the sink and here's how where I had my first major problem if I can just get under here uh, where the pipe connects to the sink right there the first time I had this unit out that broke right there so it was leaking water all over the place luckily I caught it in time because I saw the leak I had seen water all in the drawer and here's your water filter here in the hallway you have a pantry and you have a closet just about the same size pretty close anyways that's your fuse box and on to the right that is a little furnace electric furnace this is inside the pantry you should have plenty of space for your food and stuff like that on the opposite side of the hallway is your control panel it's where you can start your generator you can see the levels for your tanks uh, battery levels your slide out controls there heaters for your your black and gray tanks uh, AC control a little touch pad there you can do some things with like control the slide out and your your leveling controller right there which is a little quirky I do have to periodically have to reset that thing because it gets error codes all right, in the bathroom, we do have a pretty decent skylight here in the bathroom. Uh, basic faucet right there. Everything's pretty basic in here. I don't have any problems with it. It is what it is. It's pretty small, but this is a small unit, so no problems there otherwise. Uh, RV toilet, pretty typical. It is a little bit high off the ground, so it's cramped in here. I'm a I'm not a small guy so it takes a little bit getting used to a nice fake backsplash very small counter space that's the water heater there and light switch fan switch um, if you want to brush your teeth you're gonna have to like smash your head under there there's not a whole lot of room under that sink or under that cabinet to do anything but you do have a pretty big medicine cabinet there's a lot of space inside of it If you want to brush your teeth, I'd you're probably gonna have to do it in the kitchen sink or make a mess. Alright, here's the door to the garage area. Let's take a step back in there and check it out for a minute. It is a little dark. Pretty thick rubber diamond plate floor. Now, the garage is eight by eight, so that's something to take in, into consideration when you're if you want to put a motorcycle back here. That's a happy jack bed. I am having a hell of a lot of problems with this bed, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's a queen size bed. I was really happy to have this. I thought it would have been great. When it works, it is great. But uh, it gets stuck a lot, which caused me some problems. 5000 BTU AC unit. Back inside the sardine can, it does keep it really cold. 32 inch TV. Jensen Bluetooth stereo, same crappy speakers. You have a vent right there. Light switches and a built in charging unit if you want to charge a motorcycle or something up. Still need to take the stickers off of this. It's just a little storage container. Pretty big windows. They do open up in case you get stuck back in here. Uh, this ramp folds down and there are rails that fold up on the side so you can make a deck out of it. It has a 2,000 pound capacity if I'm not mistaken. So like I said before, it is 8x8 eight eight in the garage. Um, I have three bikes. Two of my bikes will fit. One is just a little bit too long. Which kind of sucks, but I think I can make it fit with some adjustments, so something to be aware of. So according to this sticker, the cargo area is 1,500 pounds. As opposed to the deck, which is 2,000. Alright, since I've showed you some of the features, now I'm going to show you some of the things that I don't like and some of the problems I'm having. Right here is one. I have continued to have problems with its door. Um, I'll set the I'll set the unit up, put it up on the jacks. The door seems to latch fine. It locks fine. Give it a few hours. All of a sudden, it's really really hard to shut the locks on it. And I've had a couple times in the middle of the night, even with the locks shut, the door has came open on its own. So the the deadbolt is really hard to engage there after it sets for a while. 
All right, moving on. I spoke on this earlier. I have continued to have problems with the drawers. As you can see here, this drawer does not stay shut. So I thought I'd put this bag on it to keep it from flying open. No, I had a problem with this drawer. They fixed it. It locks now. Um, something to note, that lock right there is not the same as the one above it. It has a completely different type of locking mechanism. And a couple of these cabinets I had issues with, they had to fix it too. I don't think it was this one. I think it was the, uh, the closet on the other side. Wouldn't shut. And I had this repaired. I think they replaced the whole door. It got a big crack in it. But as you can see how it's kind of shiny here, that is like really rough and matte feeling. Uh, what can you do about it is what it is. That's what they gave me. And here's one of the things that pisses me off the most. This damn bed. Every time I take it out, it either gets stuck up and I have to use the lever to let it lower down, or it gets stuck in the down position, which creates a nightmare. Now, if you have sensitive ears, you might want to skip over the next little section here. Okay, lazy days. It's midnight. Here I am in my Thoralla that, that I had in for service that you said... You couldn't find anything wrong with the switch for the bed, for the Happajack bed. It's midnight, I want to go to sleep. I can't fucking go to sleep because the bed's stuck up. Nothing. 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 You don't hear shit. You're telling me you didn't find anything wrong with it. Bullshit. Nothing. The bed won't move. Now you tell me how you don't find anything wrong. This is the third time it's been stuck, but somehow you can't find anything wrong with it. Looks like something's wrong to me, doesn't it? And here's another problem they haven't repaired yet, but are scheduled to the next time I take it in. At some point, you can see that bubble in there. I've had a water leak. Now I have never seen this wet. I've never seen it leaking. I don't know what point it actually is leaked. It could have been before I bought the thing and I just didn't notice it when I did the inspection. But you can see the damage there. It's a little bit soft. You can see the water damage here on the other side. It's just bowed up. Which leads me to over here. Now that's not water damage, but you can see the, the, the wall there is coming apart. And I fixed it myself a couple of times, but it keeps popping off. So those little staples aren't enough to keep that wall in place. And that's not the only part that it's bowing on either. Take a look at this over here. Alright, you see that bow? The wall's just bowing out right there. So, I mean, it's just a really thin wall. That's something that should be easily fixed, I hope. Just another in the list of problems. Really bad quality control with these units, in my opinion. Alright, so I just had this thing detailed, and my detailer found some really interesting things on the roof. Now, admittedly, I didn't inspect the roof when I bought it, because, honestly, I didn't think I should have to bring a ladder and inspect every RV I was looking at. You know, it's probably wrong. Take a look at this. These are bad seals. There's holes inside of that. As you follow the line down, there's a few gaps right here, right here, that's actually a really important gap, it shouldn't be missed, right there, all these holes are going to let water in, it's all going to come down your back wall, it's going to cause the fiberglass to delaminate, or dilapidate, either way, and it's going to cause you grief, you can already see bubbling in your roof, it's not supposed to be like that, it's supposed to be very taut. This is just a quick inspection. We haven't washed anything up here yet. I'm about to start now. Um, I don't know if this is your guys' first RV or what have you, but this kind of stuff is important. All right, pause this for a second. I want you to take a look at this. That is absolutely atrocious. This is terrible quality control. If I caught one of my employees doing this, caulking stuff like this, I think I'd have to fire them on the spot. That's absurd. It looks like a bunch of chewed up bubble gum. I mean, am I wrong here? Is this typical of the industry, how they seal stuff? Because over time it cracks, and that's where water's going to seep in. Water's going to seep in. If you have a warranty or if you just bought this, I would consider taking it back and having them look it over, possibly even reapply some sealants. You could do it yourself, too, if you don't trust them. 
Um, you could have me do it as well. No big deal, but um, just a few things. I'll, I'll point out more if I see it, but those are very important. This one looks sealed pretty well. All right, talk to you soon. So as you can see, my, uh, my unit does have some pretty significant problems. Something you guys should be aware of if you're shopping for one of these units. Um, you might want to think twice, because this unit, Thor, does not have very good quality control in my opinion. You better really inspect this. But I will say, I still love the thing. We love taking it out. It runs great. It has no problem keeping up with traffic. Um, I could pull my tow car with no problem. It brakes fine. I'll show you my tow car here in a minute if you want to see it. You know, stick around. I really like the garage on it. That's uh, that's something that was really important to me when I bought it. Um, it's, it might be a little bit weird sleeping back in the garage to some people, but it's cozy to me. I like it. You know, I can go back there. It's really quiet. I can turn the AC up. Neither AC unit has had a problem keeping up, uh, cooling the cooling the RV down. Even here in Florida in the summer, we've taken it out and it's been 100 plus degrees and it's still really, really, you know, comfortable inside. If you want to know more of the specs on this thing, I'll add some links to Thor's website so you can see uh, more more details about it. All right, that's about wraps it up. Hope this uh, hope this video helps some of you guys out that were, might be shopping for Thor. All right, I thought I might add this as a little extra bonus. This is what I'm pulling behind the vehicle, a um, little Fiat 500. For me, this is the perfect little tow car. It's not very heavy. It weighs about, I don't know, 2,500 pounds. It's so light you don't even need a brake system on it in most states. I added one anyways, <clears throat> just, you know, as a peace of mind. That tow bar was really easy to hook up, and uh, I don't know, it brakes good with it on here. You barely notice it back there at all.